All right, so it looks like we've got lots of folks joining us. Welcome, we're glad you're here. My name is Jesse Herman. I am the Director of Programs and Community Outreach with the World Affairs Council of Charlotte. And today you are joining us for one of our Young Professionals events. So this is the Magellan Society. We are a group that works to engage cultural awareness and world affairs within Charlotte, whether trying new restaurants, going to dance classes like this one, learning more about the world, international career panels, graduate school workshops. So different ways just to learn more about the world around us. So today we have a very exciting treat. We are <laughs> really looking forward to it and are grateful for Adriana and the North Carolina Brazilian Arts Project for partnering with us today and leading this. So I'll give you a little background on Adriana. She'll chat for a few minutes about the history and culture of Samba. We will then open it up for dancing. We'll have a little dance instruction and then go through a few songs as well. And we'll wrap up with questions. As you have questions, feel free to submit them throughout. There's a toolbar on the bottom of your Zoom screen and just throw your question in there and we'll end today's session with those questions. So Adriana's purpose is to deepen and share her knowledge and love of body awareness and art through movement via the practice of yoga, capoeira, and samba. She's been teaching since 2009 and has been training and traveling to Brazil with the capoeira community since 2006. She's studied under many different Samba and Afro-Brazilian dancers and was even selected to parade with the Grupo Especial in 2018's Carnival in Rio de Janeiro. These passions led her to co-found the North Carolina Brazilian Arts Project, whose mission is to promote and enrich our community with Brazilian movement forms and percussion by offering classes, performances, and bringing in master teachers. The NCBAP hopes to promote cultural exchange and joy, while also increasing its own knowledge and understanding of Afro-Brazilian art forms. In addition to dancing, instructing, and running an organization, Adriana is also a licensed clinical social worker with a passion for teaching mindfulness and yoga to treat her clients and community. We are so glad you're here today. We are excited to learn more about Samba and then to learn how to Samba. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me and for showing up today and um, sharing some of your time and your energy. My name is Adriana Blanco. And um, I'm here uh, to talk a little bit about the embodied resistance that is the dance and the music of Samba. Specifically, um, I'm going to talk about Samba Nupe, which is a carnival style of Samba that started developing around 1917 and has been shifting and changing and evolving ever since then. Um, I think it's important for me to socially locate myself as a white woman teaching an African Brazilian art form and using my platform and my privilege to continue deepening my study and sharing the really, really important historical roots. So I'm going to take a couple of moments just to, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not a dance scholar and I'm not a historian. I just uh, try to take the best responsibility I can to represent the movement forms that I'm embodying and sharing. Um, so I will make sure I talk a little bit about that, and then I'm also going to share the voices and the dance companies of um, African Brazilians here in, there's one in Charlotte called Moving Spirits, um, and there is, uh, there's some in D.C., um, which uh, we, we can talk about and we can, we can share that. You can also email me to get more resources on that. Um, so Samba actually comes from uh, the people that were forced into slavery, right, through the transatlantic slave trade um, taken to Brazil. And um, it comes originally from uh, folks, the Congo people, the Bantu people, and from the region of Angola. And um, there's so many diverse movement forms and art forms, you know, coming from those regions of Africa. But the, the context of, of them being forced to be mixed together and then, um, you know, uh, having the, the, um, the oppression that was going on and the European influences, and of course the cultural appropriation created created Samba. So Samba, uh, many times, there, there, there are a couple of different historical ways to describe it, but the one I'm most familiar with is that Samba was more of a respite dance that would occur after um, a religious ceremony where the forces of nature, the Orisha, were being honored and prayed to. And so at the end of that ceremony, samba, a, a circle of samba, a samba jihada would occur and instruments would be played and people would call and response songs. And, and it was sort of like a way for folks to kind of rest and celebrate and like embody their own joy and their own resistance. 
And um, there are a lot of different movement forms, like I said, that come from the ways that uh, the Orisha uh, uh, deities and forces of nature are danced. So we don't have time to go into that today, and that's also not my area of expertise, although I am familiar with that. But it's important to know that Samba comes from a place of spirituality, a, a place of like connection to ancestors, and a, and a place of resistance against oppression. So those are the main things that I think is very important for us to take away. Um, I'd like to share two videos. The first one, um, just to kind of kind of put it into a more modern context. So the Samba Jihada, what I was talking about, the, the, like the respite practice, um, of course still goes on today. It's evolved, it doesn't quite look the same, but a lot of the instruments that were used back in the day, you know, in the 17th century during Samba Jihada, it would be like a plate and a knife, right? And that would, and that would be part of the way the rhythm was made. Also, um, we have, we have a pandeiro here. So um, this is actually used for capoeira, but this is a tambourine in Portuguese called pandeiro. And this is a North African instrument that um, some sources state was, um, was brought by, by the Portuguese, but obviously it's, it's an African instrument. Um, and so these are some of the really important instruments in samba. And so um, if, in a few moments, I'm going to have Jess play the Samba Jihada that happens in modern day Bahia, which is in the northeastern part of Brazil, which is where Samba occurred, uh, specifically in the Reconcavo region. So there, um, I want you all to hear what it sounds like and what it's dance like. It might be something other than what you were expecting Samba to look like. You know, a lot of us think of Samba as like the feathers and the bikinis and carnival, and that is definitely what's part of what Samba represents, but it's not all of it and it's not its roots. So without further ado, if you could just play about 30 seconds of that video, that would be amazing. Um, it's, a, it's a documentary too, or like a mini documentary. <laughs> Okay, so that was quick. Um, we can we can like send. I think they can send out the links to that video. That is, there's so many amazing and much better videos of Samba Jihada, but that video in particular, it shows that there's someone who is leading the call and response song. Um, there is a woman dancing. A lot of times in Samba Jihada, it's the women who dance and who are the ones who are kind of in control of the dancing space in the center. And you can see the variety of instruments. A lot of them are, you know, they're definitely African drums, a lot of different kinds of drums that you see throughout the diaspora in Cuba um, and, you know, in Venezuela and th throughout the whole diaspora and like the Caribbean. Um, and so that's what I wanted to show about Samba Jihada. So those are the roots of Samba, but as they manifest in, in modern day. And then the second song that um, in just a moment Jess will play is the 2000. 20, so just this carnival, real carnival in Rio de Janeiro, it's the winning song of carnival. So this group, this samba school, won carnival in Rio, which is a very big deal. And, um, and what they, the reason why this song is, I think, very important for folks to know about is because um, the way samba now is manifesting in, um, or you know, it has been, it's always been about resistance to oppression and always talking about like the historical importance of, um, you know, of, of African people and their spiritual practices. And this particular song is honoring uh, women in Bahia who worked as laundresses, who would work as laundresses to buy the freedom their own freedom and the the freedom of the people in their families, uh, specifically the men. So it's honoring them, and um, and it was a beautiful parade that I actually got the chance to to watch this year. And so I want you to hear the difference between the way this samba sounds. Right, this is called samba carioca. This is samba school. It's a batucada. Um, lot more musical terms and stuff that I'm not an expert in. But let's take a moment just to hear at least like the first 15, 20 maybe 30 seconds of the song. I'll, I'll give a thumbs up when it's probably good. And then we'll get to moving. <laughs> Oh, 
seu dourado tem axé Faz o seu quilombo no abaieté Quem lava a alma dessa gente veste o ouro É virador ouro, é virador ouro Ora, ai, 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 oxum Seu dourado tem axé Cool. So any of you who are familiar with, um, with West African practices of Isha or Candomblé or Santeria, you might recognize Oshum as one of the deities, um, one of the forces of nature. And um, so you can already hear that they're talking about Oshum right away in the song and relating that to the women that were working as laundresses. And, um, and then what's really cool too about this particular, just to, to really like drive in the point that Samba is about resistance and about lifting people up out of oppression. Um, they are not only honoring like the laundresses of the past that did that amazing work, like liberation work, but they're also honoring um, the group. There's an actual group in Bahia that has maintained their culture of those particular laundresses. So they, they have maintained and they continue to practice the songs, the call and responses, and their samba. And so the samba school, Viradoru, connected themselves with these women and with this amazing group here in Bahia. And so they had this beautiful collaboration and they won all of Carnival. So it was a very, very special, um, very, very special song. So cool. So I've talked a lot. Um, let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of movement. So the most important thing is to just think about being natural and just trusting your body to know how to move in a polyrhythmic way, which means different parts of your body are going to be moving um, in different times, okay, like different time signatures. So we can just start, if you have a little space in your house, you can walk. I'm not going to walk too much because I'm on the lot of screen, but I'm going to start marching, and I'm going to let my arms just be loose here, and if I'm not thinking, I'm marching with the emphasis of going down, one, two, one, two, one, two. You'll notice my arms are swinging, right? And if I were to stop kind of halfway, you can see that opposite arm, opposite leg. So already there, we're thinking about the coordination between arms and legs. Those of you who haven't seen samba, carnival style samba, I'll do a quick little demo so you can see what we're working towards. So this is a slow version of the carnival style samba that is practiced in samba schools in Rio de Janeiro. You can see a big expression in my arms, a very long torso, big twisting hip movement, and dancing on the balls of my feet um, as the more feminine style, the more masculine style, however you choose to identify, is a bit of a lower posture, flat foot, still hip movement, and the arms are a little different, depending, every samba school is different. So that's the masculine and the feminine style. Samba de roda, which you saw in the first video, the boots. Um, the feet are flat. Women wear skirts, traditionally. And it's smaller. And the hip movement is more side to side. And a lot of times done in circles. And not quite as many footwork tricks. So that's what we're going for. We're practicing today because that is my specialty, right? That's what I um, feel confident teaching, is the samba from the samba schools in Rio. Okay, so, um, so this is what we're working toward, right? So you'll see my hips, I'll turn to the side and to the back. You'll see there's a twist happening in my hips. And my hips and my feet are going at a different speed than my arms. So we have to think about the coordination, right? So walking helps us with that coordination. So, okay, boom, we did that part, coordinating that. Um, let's do a little bit of a warm up with our head, shoulders, hips, feet, and legs, okay? So here we go with our head. We're gonna go ear to shoulder for eight. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chin to chest and back. Go one, look up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. And then a circle. One, two, three, four. Switch directions and five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Shoulders. Rolling them back. We've got to work them up. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Forward. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now our chest. So try to keep your hips and everything else still, just your chest. We're gonna move our ribs from side to side like as if it were a typewriter. So back and forth for eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now forward and back. So pressing the chest forward for one and then making a concave shape for two. So let's go eight. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm moving my arms out of the way. Seven, eight. Good. Making a circle with your chest. Now any direction that you want to go, we'll go four and four. So around big circle, that's one, two, three, four, switch directions, five, six, seven, eight. Good. I don't know about you, but just working my chest already starts to get me warm. We're gonna do our hips. We're gonna go side to side. So we're gonna push, so notice I'm not picking up my feet off the ground. It's a relationship between my knees and my hips. So stretch one hip to the side, and then one hip to the other side. And you'll notice the opposite knee will naturally and passively bend. So going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. This is a very important part of Samba. So we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna turn around to the back so you can see from there. Here we go. Starting to the right, hit it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more times and we're gonna go faster. Here we go, seven, eight, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, good. Okay, forward and back just to make sure we're warm. We're gonna push forward, so squeeze in your, the cheeks of your glutes, squeezing, and then back. Squeeze, back, squeeze, back. Try to keep your core engaged, so you're drawing your belly button in, using the softness in your knees, so boom, back, boom, back, boom, back, boom, back. Good, let's go a little bit faster. Two rounds of eight, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Just creating muscle memory in our hips, so now we can make a full circle. So go in the direction that you like. So think about the four corners. If you go to the front, to the side, release back, to the right, and to the front, right? We already did side to side, isolated, and we did front to back, isolated. Bring it all together. Again, squeeze front. Keep the squeeze, push to the side, release to the back, skin release, and push to the other side. Ready? Let's go for a full eight count, hitting the four corners, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, let's smooth it out as opposed to hitting, we're gonna create a circle. Here we go, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Good. Other side, four corners going in the other direction. Hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's make a circle, bringing it all together. Hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Bring your feet together, at least hip bone distance apart, not hip width. And we're gonna we're gonna articulate through our whole foot to warm up our feet. So come onto the ball of one foot and shift your weight. And shift. And shift. If balance is an issue here, you can grab a chair or you can hold on to a wall, right? Being able to negotiate through your feet and notice the dichotomy between full pass or bow engaged through the whole entire leg and a passive bend in the opposite leg is going to be really important for you to negotiate your um, weight change in some way. Okay, so keep going through. Now start thinking about posture. It's really important for some of the pace, some of the yoga, right? We're doing some of from, from uh, Rio. Actually, we're probably going to do some of from Sao Paulo today. I'll get into that in a second. And stretch and stretch and stretch, and stretch. Now work your balance, bring your hands behind your head, lift your chest up, 
Those of you who identify in a more masculine way, this is important for you to do in general as sort of like a samba dance education. You don't necessarily have to express your samba in a, in a feminine way, but it's still important um, in terms of balance, okay? Good. Now that we're going to coordinate arms and feet, I learned this, um, this warm up from Tatiani Campelo, who is, um, she is an uh, African Brazilian uh, dancer who teaches African Brazilian dance and all different types of samba in Salvador Bahia. So I learned this warm up from her. Um, so you're going to do the same thing here, switching, switching. And you're going to go up with your hands and down. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing with my hands, shoulders down, palms up. It's a good stretch. And we're going to coordinate. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Okay, so hopefully we have a little bit of blood coursing through our veins at this point. Um, we're going to start working the feet, okay? So the samba, the most important part of samba, if there's one thing that I would like for y'all to learn today, is that maintaining the rhythm in your feet is going to be the most important thing. Maybe some of you have seen samba where there's like all kinds of like crazy footwork that, you know, that you see. All of this stuff is fine, right? All of this is fine. It's good. In fact, even here, this can be traced to different Orisha um, forces of nature. Um, I recently learned that, that that has some connection to Oya or Yansa, this, this particular movement, especially with the hand. We're not going to get into all of that today. Um, I learned that from Pablo Guerrero, uh, an African Brazilian dance teacher in Rio. Anyway, naming all the names. But what we really need to learn is the one, two, three. So just for the purposes of consistency, so we don't get lost, so we can stay together, we're going to start with our right foot. So I'll turn to the back so you can see. But you're going to practice one, two, three. There's a pause. One, two, three. Beat, beat, off beat. Beat, beat, off beat. Beat, beat, off beat. Beat, beat, off beat. One, two, three. You'll notice I have my feet flat. We're not getting on the balls of our feet just yet because that's probably not as important for today since we're doing beginner stuff. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Great opportunity to practice your posture. Some is characterized by beat, beat, off beat. Beat, beat, off beat. Beat, beat, off beat. One, two, three. Let's go a little faster, which means you don't have to pick up your feet as much. There's less of a lift. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Faster. One, two, three. 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 Keep going. Don't stop. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keep going. One, two, three. 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 Chest up, belly in. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. For those who identify with the masculine energy and the feminine energy, you must learn one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Go. One, two, three. 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 Five, six, seven, eight. Paro. Okay, so you might have noticed I was trying not to do it too much. If you exhale enough and relax enough, you'll notice that your hips are going to come along for the ride. So some been okay. I think that there's um, a lot of different perspectives. I have been taught by my teachers that some banupe refers to a carnival style, both in Sao Paulo, Right? In the big, huge metropolis in Brazil, they have their own samba schools and their own samba tradition. And in Rio de Janeiro, okay, the carnival style. But samba nupe is also a very general term. And what it means is there's samba in your feet. So this is why the feet are so important. So samba comes from your feet, it comes from the ground. Okay, so then this is down, back, back, back. If I relax, I can start to let my hips come with me, right? 
we already practiced here. We went side to side. Now our hips just have to get in alignment with our feet in terms of the timing. So we can try, I'll, I'll turn to the back. We did side to side. Let's work the one, two, three rhythm now in our, in our hips. So feet, feet, off feet. Right, so I'll my arms up so you can see. I'm going to go right, right, left, right, left, right, left. One, two, three. I'm not picking up my feet. I'm using my knees to isolate the hip. Right, left, 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 right, left. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay? I wish I could see y'all to be like, yes, go. <laughs> but if these are the things that I want you to learn for today, really, if you leave here being able to do one, two, three and, and add the hips, um, it's super amazing. Let's try to combine it. Feet and hips. Okay? So we go with feet. One, two, three. Add the hips. Side to side. Side to side. Side to side. One, two, three. Beat, beat, off beat. Beat, beat, off beat. Beat, beat, off beat. One, two, three. Un, dos, tres. Un, dos, tres. Un, dos, tres. Let's go faster. Un, dos, tres. 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 One, two, three. One, two, three. Here we go. Keep going. Five, six, seven. Eight and stop. Woo! Okay, so just for the purposes of being efficient and not do, trying to do too much in one hour and being able to learn what you can today, we're not going to go too much into the twist. But what is characteristic? So samba is so diverse, it has so many different genres within itself, so many different ways to express it and dance it. It's a popular dance form. It is not its oral tradition, right? It has technique. It has different teachers and masters that are developing different techniques that it's according to their style or according to their samba school. The one thing that I have learned recently is that there is a distinction between samba in Sao Paulo, right, which is further south, um, so it's Bahia is where it comes from, but then we have Sao Paulo and we have Rio de Janeiro, they're down further south, two big cities, they have a difference in their samba. So Sao Paulo style, we've already done it. The hip movement is characterized side to side, like a swing, like a pendulum. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, taka, 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 taka. And of course, there's a back step, which we'll go over in a moment. So this is some Pablo style. My hips going to side to side. The real style, there's a twist. So if these were my hip points, like in my pelvis, they go brak, 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 so the twist. And so that changes the shape of the legs, what the legs look like and the feet look like. Um, but they're both, no one is better, or they're just different, it's just a different way, right? Um, each city, Sao Paulo and, and Rio and, and different cities and parts of Bahia have their own marvelous and unique history related to Samba. So, um, let's get up on the balls of our feet, hopefully we've warmed them up, and we're going to keep our kind of hands out of the way, and we're going to go a little faster and we're going to challenge our balance. Ready? Here we go, three counts of eight. Five, I'm gonna turn it back. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, four, two, three, five, two, three, six, two, three, seven, two, three, eight, two, three, and again, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, five, two, three, six, two, three, seven, two, three, eight, two, three. You'll notice when I'm on the balls of my feet, I am not picking up my foot too high on the offbeat because then I won't have time once the song goes fast, okay? So let's try, let's put the song on, okay, that we have prepped. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do flat-footed, just the feet, I'm not gonna think about the hips. Then we're gonna do just the hips, we're not gonna think about the feet. We'll do three rounds of eight for each one, and then we're gonna put it together, feet and hips, three rounds of eight. Do what you gotta do with your arms, but dance, right? Don't be like awkward with your arms. Lift them up out of the way intentionally. You can bring them up on your head, that was fine. You can even, what, whatever, you know? If you wanna style, if, you, if you're, you know, you're already feeling yourself, one, two, three, one, two, three, you wanna work all that, do it. For now, just kinda get them out of the way so you can focus on the one, two, three of the feet and the hips. So if you could, please play our song. I think it's 100 BPMs, which is not too slow, 
not too fast. Three rounds of eight with just the feet, three rounds of eight, just the hips, three rounds of eight, combining the two. Okay, let's do it. Music, please. Here we go. in and out. Um, this might be good before I go forward anymore to see if like on the chat if there are any specific technical questions about what I'm doing. Um, if someone can check that for me to see if I can address that if that's needed. So we don't have any questions in right now but we do have a comment from Nassim who says I just want to say that I love your energy. Thank you. Oh that's very sweet. Thank you. Cool. Um, all right, so let's get back to it. Um, we're gonna do three more counts of eight. For those of us that feel like our feet and their legs are ready, we're gonna balance on the balls of the feet. And again, I am asking um, the folks who uh, identify with a more masculine energy to even go on the balls of the feet too. The reason why we practice on the balls of the feet is because we're assuming we're wearing high heels, but it also it facilitates a lot of the movement to be on the balls of the feet. So those who identify with the masculine energy, um, a lot of the dancers work on the wall. There is a bit of a heel in the shoe that they wear too, so it's important to be able to know that this is where a lot of your emphasis needs to go. Um, even though there are a lot of steps that include going on the heel. If you're wearing stiletto shoes, that would not be a good idea, and that doesn't happen, but that's an aside. Okay, so let's practice. I'm gonna turn to the front so you can see some better styling. We're gonna do three counts of eight. I'm gonna be on the balls of my feet. Let's hit it with the music again. And here we go. Five, whenever you're ready. Music. 
Excellent. Okay. Okay. So, Samba no Pé, Paulista style, okay, from Sao Paulo. We're going to add have another yarn. question come in just to pop in yeah. real quick. Uh, Brianna yeah. Ronaldo says, thank you for your instruction and inclusion, Adriana. Question about technique. How far off the ground should our feet lift when we're moving quickly? And then a follow-up question from her as well, because she thinks you answered the feet question. When we practice Samba, not perform, should we always be barefoot? And what kind of clothing do you recommend? Good. Very excellent questions. I'll get to the one about the balls of the feet. You want to lift up as high as you possibly can. You want to lift your heels up off. That's a practice in of itself, and it takes a while. So balance is a big deal in Samba Nupe for carnival style. In carnival style, you have to be incredibly strong. You have to train like crazy, and you have to have good balance because you're wearing these big, huge, bulky costumes, and you also have these huge shoes that are very uncomfortable. So your feet have to be very, very strong. Right? In general, samba comes from the earth and your feet are flat. So if you cannot dance samba with your feet flat, then I would venture to say that you don't know how to dance samba, right? So that is the most important part. It's an important part of the ancestor, ancestral connection, uh, connection to the earth. But for what we are doing and what I specialize in and what my company performs and does most of the time, you have to be on the balls of your feet. So you can practice this concept of going up and down, right? So heel up, up, up. What happens sometimes is people, they'll be like up and then they'll come up and down, which is going to change the level of your samba and it's going to add this bounce. No, no bounce. And I'm going to hate on Zumba for a hot second. In Zumba, they don't teach the proper technique for samba, period. They have appropriated it um, in many ways. And so you'll see a lot of folks who are dancing Zumba and they have this bounce, which comes from not having the proper connection to the earth with their feet. So, no bounce, no bounce in the upper body, okay? Barefoot is good when you're practicing. I practice with socks, I fold them in half sometimes, so I can do particular footwork, right? And that sometimes means like a little bit of smoothness. Um, I practice in sneakers, depending on the ground. I practice in flip flops. You want to be able to do it in any kind of, um, with any kind of, um, Foot, you know, any kind of thing on your foot, because it is a popular dance. Samba doesn't just happen in the samba schools. It happens after a candomblé ceremony. It happens at a barbecue. It happens at a party. It happens at a club. It happens outside. It happens with a plate and a fork. It happens with, it happens all the time. So you got to be ready. And clothes, when you're really training hard, something that you feel like you're comfortable sweating in, for sure. But otherwise, you know, you can go crazy at a party wearing a dress or like a suit or whatever. Um, malandros which is uh, another type of samba and has a lot of historical importance too. They would wear suits, you know, like a full on suit. So um, let's get to the arms. Thank you for those questions. Let's get to the arms. So well, we're just gonna practice a couple of eight counts. Of, um, arms are very, very particular depending on who you're studying with. So I wanna make sure that like, I'm not making y'all think that there's a right way and that there's a wrong way. There is a suggested way and then there's a stylistic preference depending on who you are training and studying with, okay? So, we can think about the arms in terms of a simple fourth position. If I were to get like super robotic, right? Just like you were walking, you're already dancing is natural to walking. If I'm walking, I can walk in a fourth position, coordinating hands and feet. So that's how it's gonna be. So when I work my arms, right, it's, this is me simplifying my walk, right? I'm already, I'm already here. So that's the coordination that we need to think about. Because we're just learning, we're going to keep it nice, the arms nice and low. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, just switch them. Right, so if my right foot is starting, my right arm, and oh, by the way, we need to practice our back step. So we did one, two, three in place. We're going to step and together, back and together. Let's do that first. Am I excited? Right and together, left, right, left, right, left, right. So this is where the weight shift is important. So back, left, together, left, right, together. So when I say right, left, left, right, that means that's the foot that's coming up. Okay, so let's do two eight counts of that on the balls of our feet, stepping back. A very small step, very, very small step. Okay, good, here we go. Stepping back, go one, two, three, two, two, three. Three, two, three, four, two, 
front foot together, back foot, 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 front foot together, a little faster now, and one, two, three, 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 back front together, back front together, back front together, back front together. Okay. Whew. I forgot about that part. I'm glad we did that. Let's add the arms, and then we like almost have to be done because we have to get ready for questions. Um, so assuming we're doing the back step, right foot back, like I said, that means our right foot is gonna come forward to help us balance. So if we go back, front, together, switch, 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 back, front, together, switch. Keep going. Uh, mm, da, 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 chica, 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 da, da, Taka chica taka, taka chica taka. Okay, that is the elemental shape, the elemental dynamic. Now what we need is the essence, and we need to really feel the rhythm, right? So never in samba. Okay, wait, let me chill out with the numbers. Not a never, but in samba, it is not necessarily something that you want to stop your arms the way I just showed you. That was just to help with the coordination. So it's not like hold it. Then, then switch it. It's a continuous, you'll notice my arms don't stop moving. Ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba. So they don't, they keep going, right? You want to keep them low when you're first starting or else it can look real wild, okay? Um, those of you who might have some other dance experience, um, a lot of times folks think that they need to overly stop their fingers and they break their wrist. We don't want to break our wrist. We want to stretch all the way through. Folks who have a masculine energy, you want to think about your arms as if you're walking, but you're moving from your shoulder, right? So you're not going to swing your arms like from the elbow. You're going to move from the shoulder, right? That's why we've warmed up our shoulders. A and A and A. And then those who have a more masculine energy, don't make a fist, but you want your hands to be a little more relaxed. Folks who have a more feminine energy, stretch through your fingers, you can do a little bit of styling. All right, let's get on the balls of our feet. Let's turn the music on. Let's try to coordinate feet, hips, arms. We're gonna do three rounds of samba half tempo, so three rounds of eight, and then we're gonna do three rounds of eight tempo for the 100 BPM, so same song. Let's hit it. Um, I'm gonna turn around so you can follow my feet. We're doing the back step, okay? If the back step feels crazy, stay with your feet parallel, no problem. Interrupt me if, if there is. I will just keep going. Um, 
Yes, question. I have, I think, one more technical question, which is from Emily Yaffe, who says, it looks like your knees turn out rather than stay forward. Is that right? Cool, awesome question. Um, so they are not consciously turning out. Um, when I twist, it's gonna look like a turnout, but it's not what's happening. In fact, I wanna keep my knees to the front because if I turn out my knees on purpose, I will limit the movement in my hips, okay? So that's sort of a, it might be because I was twisting and I shouldn't have been, I'm trying to not twist. Um, but yeah, you wanna keep your knees forward. Knees forward, da 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 Also, the particular shape of my hips and the way my femur bone goes into my hip socket, I'm kind of like a frog. So I'm naturally really turned out. Some folks are naturally more turned in, some people are more neutral. Your samba is never gonna look like my samba. My samba is never gonna look like my teacher's samba or anybody else's. You've gotta find, that's what's so cool about this style is there is an essence to it. And um, as a guest in this art form, right? Like I can never have that ancestral lineage of what it is, but I can find a way to connect to it in my own special way, right? So, but technically in, in the, the carioca and even the paulista, especially the paulista samba, you want your knees to the front because it just helps with the hip movement, okay? When we practice our hip movements, these are some really good drills, right? And you'll notice I've got my knee to the front. When we're doing variations in our samba, you can do a lot of different things. There are a lot of variations, right? Variations, 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 variations. But the most important thing is the one, two, three, and the big hit. Moment, okay? So let's get, um, oh, we're gonna do a little bit of an intro here, okay? So we're gonna walk with the one, two, three, and the fourth position. We're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, ha! So we're gonna stretch and open up. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. I'm trying to try not to fall, okay? So the stepping, you're walking with your right foot first. Hit your hip, hip, up, down, up, left, up, down, up, stretch, arms, I'm gonna make a cross, down, two up. You're gonna press through your whole leg. Lift that hip up, turn your chest to the front so you have a nice rotation, and you need to give all of the sensuality that you can muster in that moment, okay? So, putting it together with a little intro walk, we hit one, two, three, two, two, three, right, hey, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, step back, for your balance, come up into a passe. Point your toe, bring it to your knee. You're gonna turn your knee to the lateral side, turn your chest to the front, open up in what's called a sheath or an X, ha, and hold. Okay, let's go. Ready? Back up, you can do this in a tiny space. One, two, three, one, two, three, three, E, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, back, E, hold, okay? Let's go together three more times. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, two, two, three, ha, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one with a more masculine vibe. Here we go. One, two, three, two, two, three, and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a. And you know what? We can actually even stretch forward for more masculine vibe and move your way back. Okay? Again, more masculine vibe. Here we go. Hit it. One, two, three. Two, two, three. Hey. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back step. 
stretch. Okay? Um, feminine vibe. Let's try it with the music. So it's full tempo samba. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fast. Ready? Last time. like five to ten minutes of questions we have eight minutes I hope that's okay um, let me know if anyone has questions if you want information on other dance companies um, and when I teach my classes and so on and so forth so here I am for questions that was so much fun thanks I think I've got some rosy cheeks here but uh, we had a great time following along even if we didn't follow the moves quite perfectly we had a great time doing it and learning about the way you incorporate history and culture into the movement form which is really fascinating uh, so kind of you know what you just briefly talked on someone has asked where can i learn more about samba and take classes in charlotte yay cool okay so um i teach my classes at um my studio which we're trying to keep open um called the project space it's in noda stay tuned because we might have to move but it's on um uh, 15th and Davidson. I'm teaching online classes every Tuesday for like beginner to intermediate at 7 p.m. Um, so I send out, I usually like I have a reoccurring link. Um, you have to DM me, you have to send me a message if you're kind of outside of my already network of like monthly students and ongoing students and I'll send you the link and it's free. Um, recently we've been doing some donations for uh, Black Lives Matter or for like jail support stuff going on here in Charlotte with like Charlotte Uprising um, and you know we're, we're trying to make sure we are donating and doing what we can and then also trying to keep the doors open so um, so that's it Tuesdays at 7 in real life pre-COVID I would teach Tuesdays at 7 and Thursdays at 8 um, there's also another organization here based in Charlotte run by Tamara Williams, who's a professor uh, at UNC Charlotte. Uh, her company is called Moving Spirits. I, I do not believe that they, that they teach um, uh, carnival style samba, but they do all different types of samba and African Brazilian dance forms. And she is an actual um, dance historian and scholar. So you can hit her up. Um, but that's what we have going on in Charlotte. So um, there are a lot of other organizations. There's one in DC that is, um, her name is Flavia, if I'm not mistaken, you can look her up. I cannot remember the name of her company right now, I'm blanking, but it's based in a Capoeira Angola studio in DC, in Northwest DC. So, um, yeah, that's, um, and you can even learn more about Batala. Any what? Is the DC company Batala? Batala, yeah, Batala is, um, is run by a uh, percussionist and artist who comes from Salvador, Bahia. I'm not an expert, this is just what I know. And um, he has his, some, the samba reggae is the, is the rhythm that, um, it's another rhythm very closely tied to resistance. I think it came about in the 60s and 70s. Um, and so he has sort of like a franchise situation going on where he has different groups of percussionists throughout the United States that like learn his rhythms and they use like his style and they have his drums and um and they do performances too. They do, you know, there's a lot of dancing with the drum, and that's what Samba Reggae is. There's it's a dance form and it's a and it's a it's a natural rhythm, percussive rhythm, not what we're doing, not what we did today. Very different. So a couple related questions. How long would you say it takes an amateur to truly get the hang of samba? And is there such thing as being done? Are you ever done learning samba? No. Oh my God. So first of all, like, 
It is an ocean of knowledge and wisdom and ancestry that no one is done. Even masters in Brazil, you know, they, they are always learning and it's always evolving. And there's always, because I think of globalization, like there's going to be influence everywhere, you know, because of the systems of oppression in place, um, there's appropriation, but then there's like this incredible resilient response to the pro appropriation and then like grabbing it back for themselves, you know, the African Brazilians in, in terms like that resilience practice, which is what makes Samba such a treasure, right? Um, so yeah, no, you've never stopped. Um, and you know, as your body changes, as, as we age, how, how we manifest our Samba is gonna shift, but the learning never stops. Can an amateur learn Samba? Of course. I don't know how long it'll take, it depends on how hard you train. It depends on, um, do you listen to the music? Are you trying to be a technician? Are you really trying to like get the vibe and understand the essence? Do you travel to Brazil? All of those things like make it happen faster, of course. Um, you know, or some folks, they just want it like as a technical thing to include in their movement practices. Okay, that's cool too, you know? Um, it just sort of, it just sort of depends. But your samba, like there's one particular samba teacher in California. Her name is Ania Malandru and she is the founder of the um, International Samba Congress in California. And she says that like samba can't be taught, that she can like facilitate a space for samba, but samba is like an energy. And so, I mean, I, I, I can totally subscribe to that too. You know, so she, she has, you know, tells stories of like different students from different backgrounds. Like I think she posted something about a, a woman from Iran who, you know, took her class and like was really able to like emulate the hip movements. And so, you know, her, her perspective on it is more like connected to essence as opposed to technicality. So it's like a really, like a very real question that I have a real solid answer for. <laughs> question that you could have solid answers for. Uh, Brianna wants to know who some of your favorite Samba artists are, because she's trying to make a Spotify playlist. Oh, Samba artists, okay. Um, Clara Nunez is amazing. Um, Marchinda Davila, how do I spell that? M-A-R-T-I-N, D apostrophe A-V-I-L-A. Seu Georgi, all day long, S-E-U, and then space Georgi, uh, J-O-R-G-E. Um, who else do I love? Um, Zeca Pagodinho, hello, Z-E-C-A, P-A-G-O-D-E. There's so many others. Um, if you find, the, if you start with those, like psh, Spotify will help you out. You can't go wrong. And then any of the Samba schools. So the one Viradoro that we did, they have great songs. Um, Mangueira as a Samba school, they have amazing Enhedo, that's the type of Samba song that they have that we listen to, it's called Enhedo, E-N space R-E-D-O, Manguera, Salguero, super famous. Um, so there's so many different types of styles. <laughs> and then Samba Reggae, all of them, Ile Aye, all that stuff. Yeah. So a question from Carrie Nelson. Can you post your school and class info? So if you'll just send that to me, Adriana, I'll make sure everyone who has participated today gets that information. And then okay, to close this out, um, would you say that Samba has improved parts of your physical and mental well-being? Has it helped your posture, flexibility, cardio, and general wellness? Yeah, oh, for sure. Cardio, for sure. Flexibility, zero, because like you move your hips so much and then I tend to be so tired afterwards. I'm like, oh, and I don't stretch. Not good, you should stretch. But um, in terms of my cardiovascular fitness and in terms of a, like a practice of joy and movement and self-expression, oh my gosh, it's, it's an amazing way to connect to history in like a real way but disconnect from pain you know we can many of us you know some of us can some of us cannot have that same ancestral connection to what samba means but i think that using our human empathy we can understand what it means to need respite and to need and to need to practice joy and safety in, in community and so i think that we i think in terms of wellness in general most definitely an amazing practice and yeah you can't not be in like strong good shape in your legs and in your core if you're going to be on the balls of your feet shaking your hips and moving your legs a lot impossible not to be <laughs> Great. well 
that is the close of our hour. Thank you everyone who participated today. And thank you again to Adriana and the North Carolina Brazilian Arts Project. We will have this recording available. It will be on our website. And we do encourage you to go to our website, learn more about the World Affairs Council of Charlotte and our young professionals arm, the Magellan Society. We would love for you to become a member of the World Affairs Council as we put out more and more virtual events covering a variety of topics as a way for you to learn more about the world and become a truly global citizen. So thank you everyone for coming and we hope to virtually see you again soon.